Okay, so today we're going to talk about setting up replication with a backup or initializing replication with a backup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create the replication from start to finish. And then I'm going to show you how to script it as well. And then we're going to talk about a couple minor things along the way, but we're not really going to get into deep replication theory. This is for people who already basically know how to set up replication and they just want that magic sauce that's going to allow them to be able to initialize it with a backup. Now, why would you want to initialize with a backup? Well, usually when you do that, it's because the database is so big that taking a snapshot would just take too long. It's too laborious, or it takes too much disk space, right? And instead, you want to use like last night's backup and roll through the logs, or take a fresh backup instead that you can tune and do in just 20 or 30 minutes, and then you know, do a restore that's only going to take 20 or 30 minutes and get things up and running, whereas it would take hours to do it with a snapshot. So let's go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to my first configuration script here. Now this is, this is adding the distributor and setting up the distributor on the server. Now you'll see here that I've got 01, 02, 03, and that's actually a lot, that, that, that's a lot better here, right? It's, it's more distinguishable here. And I like to do that when I set up my replication scripts because this tells me which ones I need to run first and which ones I need to run second and then third, right? So if you get a call in the middle of the night and, you know, replication is destroyed and you need to set it back up again, or if you just need to set up another one, it's a lot easier here to go one, two, three, than it is to say, okay, what do I need to do first? I need to do this, then I need to do that, then I need to do that. No, it's a lot easier here if you number your scripts like this. So that's why I do that. I think it's, uh, I think it makes things a lot easier. And since we tend to be brain dead in the middle of the night, right, or at any given time in the day, then it's just best here if you have them numbered so that you can just follow the paint by numbers that you've already outlined for yourself. Anyway, so the only thing I want to say here is with the add distributor SP, um, you give it the name of the distributor and the password to the distri to the distribution account. It's going to be the, I think it's called uh, admin distribution or something like that. We'll look at it when it gets set up here. Um, let me see if it's in here already from the last time. Uh, no, it's not. Let me refresh it. Yeah, distributor admin. So it is right here. Um, and I need to delete that. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. So when that account gets created, it's going to be created with the password that you give it here. Give it a good, strong password. Now, if you leave it as an empty string or as null, then it's going to be created with a random password. I like that a lot less. So uh, I like to give mine a specific password. And the rest of this is just setting it up. It's putting the files in the right location and whatnot, right? So um, this is straight out of the out of the wizard script. So here I'm going to go ahead and hit go. Actually, let me get out of here. Yeah, use master. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to do that. Already defined a distributor, huh? I thought I had that taken care of from my dry run. So let me go delete that and then I'll come back and create the distributor for you. Hold on one sec. Okay, I'm back. So what happened was I evidently brought up my drop distributor script and just never ran it. So let's give this another shot and see what happens. There we go. No errors this time. It created everything it needed to create. Now if I refresh this, I've got my distributor admin back. There we go. So that's step one. Let me save that and close it. Now on to step two. And step two, I've kind of outlined the process for you here. So you need to create the publish, the publication and the articles. I've got that here in this script. And I've only got a single article because this is just a, you know, a, a test video, right? And then I need to take the backup, then I need to restore the backup, and then I need to point the subscriber uh, to the backup file and create the subscriber. So first, create the publication and the articles. Well, here's the publication and the articles. And the thing that you got to do here is allow initialize from backup. You need to set that equal true. 
when you script this out from the wizard, it will auto it will it will have this set to false. And so just come in here and change that to true and you're golden. Set anything else in here you want to. And then add your articles. It's that simple. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Shouldn't take too long because I've only got one article. Now, if you've got a lot of articles, it really could take a long time. I used to have a replication scenario where we were replicating literally thousands of articles. And it took anywhere between 9 and 15 minutes to run this portion of it, depending on what was going on on the database and all that. So the more articles you get, the longer this is going to take. Okay, so I created that. That's number one. Now, take the backup. Well, I can take the backup. Sure, let me see if I can find it. Here we go. So I've got this backup. I'm going to take that. And I'm replicating to the same box, so my situation here is a lot easier. I don't have to mess with, you know, connecting to a different box to do restores and all of that stuff. Everything's happening right here. But just, you know, of course, connect to whichever box you need to. Um, this is a video about how to do it with a backup, not necessarily how to uh, stretch it across several boxes, right? Okay, so let's see what the next one. Okay, I took the backup. Now I need to restore the backup on the subscriber, and it says here, don't forget to recover the database. Okay, sorry about that. I had to go take care of that chat that kept coming in. All right, so, and it says, don't forget to recover the database. It can't be left in no recovery. Now, I used to make this mistake all the time. I would restore a full backup and then a whole slew of log backups after that, and then I would leave it in no recovery and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't connect replication to the database because it's in no recovery. So don't forget, you have to recover the database when you restore it. So that's where we are now. We're going to restore the database. Was that this one? There we go. I'm going to overwrite the one that's already there. There we go. Now, let's go to number... Four, point the subscriber to the backup file and create the subscriber. So here I've got the create subs subscriber script, and in the SP add subscription SP, it takes three parameters that we're interested in right now, and I've marked those right here. I'm going to attach this to the to the post. The sync type is initialized with backup. Backup device type will be disk because that's what I did. I did a disk level backup. Um, look up that parameter if you want to see others. And of course the backup device name, which is the full path to the backup file. Now, here's what I meant before by restoring log backups. The more articles you get and the bigger your database is, the longer this is going to take to do. So I've had it take so long to do the, the restores before and creating the publication and all of that, that I was literally three or five hours behind in replication by the time I got the database restored. So that means that I've got five hours worth of transactions sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting while I'm doing all of this stuff. And that's unacceptable, right? I mean, you're already five hours behind. So in a case like that, you would restore the full backup. Let me go back here. You'd, order, you'd restore the full backup with no recovery and then roll through all of the log backups afterwards, or take a new log backup, right? The more of those logs that you that you restore, the lesser the, the less behind you're gonna be, right? So let's say that I do it from last night's backup, I restore through all the logs, and that all takes like an hour and a half, right? So now I'm gonna take one final log backup on my public on my publisher, right? And then I'll restore it here. And I'll point this one at the log backup, right? At that final log backup after I recover the database, right? After this, lo after this last log restore, you'll recover the database. Then that tells it which log file you want to use. And the reason it needs this is because it needs the LSN in order, the current LSN in order to start replication. It, no it needs to know where to start the replication from. So it's going to read from a certain point to a certain point, right? 
So it needs to know where that is. And the backups contain the LSNs that are in the backups. So by giving the backup file, whether it be a full backup or a log backup, whatever, right? You're telling you're 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 allowing it to discover which LSN it's going to start from. And if you can get as up to date as possible, so instead of being say five hours behind because it took so long to to do the restore and the copy and all of that stuff, right? Um, you can take these last log backups and you can only be five or ten minutes behind, right? And you can catch that up with no problem at all. Okay, so. These are the three that I'm interested in, and then this guy right here is just going to create the agent. Um, you can create whichever agent type you like. I think this one is doing a push. Uh, where is it? Yeah, there it is. It's doing a push right there. So um, if you want to do a pull, of course, you'll do it the way you need, right? Um, chances are you'll script yours out and you'll just steal these three lines and then just replace it. So it's always best to back up to a network location. So you would put your network location in here, right? It'd be a UNC path, whack, whack, server name, whatever, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do this now. This is just getting everything set up and we should be good to go after this. There we go. Now let's give it a test. So I was actually doing this one and I'm doing a single table in here. I'm doing uh, backup settings server. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to open up this one and then I'm going to open up that same table in this other database and the subscriber. There we go. So now let's go ahead and copy this row right here and let's call this Gen2 and Sean2 and Sean2. There we go. And let's watch it come across this side. There we go. And it's already come across this side. So replication is up and working. Now, one last thing I want to do real quick. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sorry for this being just a really quick run through. But again, this is just for people who already know what they're doing with replication and just need help figuring out how to initialize with a backup. So the way I created all of these scripts, let me shut down some of this is I just went to replication and you can do this when you create it, right? So if I say, no, not publisher properties. So if I come here and say new publication, let's see, let's do this one. Then I can say transactional and I can say tables, just take everything I can. Next, don't create a snapshot when this happens. Okay, leave this blank. Security settings. Sure, I'm going to run under the agent account. Absolutely. Instead of creating the publication, I'm going to generate a script. And that's how I did it. I'm not going to I'm not going to do it now because it'll create another script on my hard drive that I don't really care about. But that's what it'll do. It'll create a script and let's see if I do this, I can have a chance to to say where it goes. And this right here is where I'll put my 01 dash so that I know this is the proper order, right? Or maybe this is the second one because I want to create the public. I want to create the distributor and all that first, which makes this one number two, right? So anyway, that's how you initialize replication with a backup file. Uh, you can do it with a full backup file or roll through log, log backups. And then, of course, you can set any of these guys you want. And the big reason why you would want to to script this out not only is because you can only you can only point this at a backup file if it's in script, but in the middle of the night when you have this problem or when you have a problem with your replication or uh, for whatever reason you need to rebuild replication, then it's a lot better to have all of this scripted out with all of the options that you have set, so that you don't have to go you don't have to go remembering what you did and what options you chose and where everything is. This way you can build replication back the way it was before and know for a fact that everything is the same and you can pass this off onto juniors or you can pass it off onto not guys if you're a good enough scripter and so on. So it's really advantageous for you to script out your replication like this. And in fact, when I'm doing replication in uh, an enterprise, 
I'll keep a folder here and one of them for each publication. And then I will, uh, you know, for each publication, I'll keep a full set of scripts in there to be able to manage it so I don't have to constantly uh, be looking stuff up. So keep these scripts on hand. And if you make a change to it, then make a change to your scripts in here. It takes a little bit of management, but it's better than being caught unawares or accidentally forgetting a setting that you put in there because uh, because it was the middle of the night or because you forgot about it or because somebody else did it and didn't tell you about it. It's just much better uh, to do this, to, to do it this way in script than it is to uh, try to guess what your intent was or what you did before. And there you go. I hope this helps.